Okay. Hi, good morning, everyone. This is uh, Janice Wood. Um, welcome to my broadcast for seniors, where I talk about subjects that I feel are concerning seniors because I am a senior and I use, uh, I know seniors' information is not always out there that we need. A uh, little bit about me I'm a life insurance agent that specializes in Medicare insurance such as the Medicare Advantage plans, the prescription drug plans, and the supplemental plans. But today we're gonna to talk with John Hung, who is a life insurance agent and his, his expertise is life insurance itself. He um, is gonna talk about himself in a couple of minutes, but John um, works with seniors all the time. He has his parents that are seniors and of course, re other relatives and friends that are seniors. And sometimes in just talking to him, he was saying how he feels like he's a senior himself. And, you know, he's looking forward to retirement because he helps people get ready for retirement. And he just enjoys doing that. So John, give us some information about yourself. John and I did a little uh, broadcast show on June 18th. You may want to go back and look at that. But we're going to talk in more detail this morning about um, how long-term care can be added as a rider or an addition to your existing life insurance policy. So John, welcome this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yes, I'm so happy to have yeah. you back. Uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself and how you, I know you're from South Korea and you've been here yes. for 30 years, okay? I know you're a father of two young girls, which really makes you feel like you may be a senior, but you have no idea. <laughs> okay. Two young daughters and of course your wife, and you've been living in Orange County for 30 years? Yeah, yeah, so pretty yeah. much my second home. Um, yeah, girl, I, I, I was raised and born in South Korea. However, I came here when I was young, so I feel like Southern California is my home. Um, and one day I hope to retire here as well to make this a, my final destination. Um, I, I say this because I work with the life insurance and I work with a lot of seniors who I see uh, many of them have successfully designed their life to enjoy their retirement and their last part of their life. So I'm, I'm really excited that if you do this right, being a senior is the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> well, when you're a senior, you may not think that when you wake up and something hurts that didn't hurt the day before. <laughs> yeah, so you have, you have to do this right. <laughs> right, all of a sudden you can't see and you gotta have that cataract surgery. <laughs> Okay. Yes. There's yes. each each age has their own correct has their own thing that they have to go through. But as yeah. a senior, you know, we've earned some privileges, okay? And it's how to get the most out of those privileges if we plan correctly. Correct. Correct. Okay. That is a big if a lot of times. But um I believe there are people like yourself, Janet, including myself. Who could give these people information for them to make the right decision along the way and once they do i think everybody will feel great about the final outcome right okay so what if i i'm sitting here i have a life insurance policy it has you know it can have equity in it if i'm talking a whole life insurance policy so real quick what is the difference between whole life insurance and term insurance for the people who are watching us. Cool. Okay, that is a very good question. That is like the basic one-on-one of life insurance that we sometimes skip. Now, term life insurance and whole life insurance have many different ways to describe it. But the simplest way I believe is when you're purchasing a car, you're either gonna lease it or buy the car. Term life insurance is like leasing a car. Eventually, it's not yours anymore. You're gonna have to turn it in but when you buy a car, like a whole life, where you build an equity, it's now yours. Sometimes the value goes up tremendously to make a good 
return on it. Sometimes you die along the way and take care of the beneficiary with the debt benefit. And a lot of times you hope to retire with the two where there's enough equity in there that you could say, in my retirement, spread this into a lifetime payment. So the both insurance are basically a, a life insurance. But however, the basic term is that one builds equity, one does not. Okay. So whole life insurance or universal insurance, it builds equity. Correct. So if I started out with, let's say, a $50,000 life insurance policy and i didn't borrow from it i didn't do anything with it i just i didn't touch it i left it alone and now i've had it for 30 years my children have grown okay so the reason i took it out was to protect my family but now i'm sitting there with this equity all of a sudden that fifty thousand dollars is worth a hundred thousand dollars okay because well, it does go up. It does. Oh, yeah, maybe up. more in 30 years. Than in 30 the, the years. Because okay. I know I, had, uh, I have a cousin whose parents took out a whole life insurance policy when she was a baby for oh. a minimal amount of money. And all of a sudden, because it was very minimal, she had $100,000 in equity that she, she yeah, took good for her. She, cashed, good for her. she cashed it in. So, I mean, people don't realize that insurance will pay you a higher interest rate than, let's say, like the banks right now. You get no interest rate. Yeah. Our insurance, when, if we're talking about equity, keep on building on that. Um, as a senior, you're right. When you're growing up, when you're raising a baby like myself right now, mm -hmm. the needs are different than when you become a senior. When your kids are out of the house making more money than yourself, yeah, now the situation is reversed. Protecting somebody <laughs> when they could protect me. So yeah, see, insurance needs to be looked at it carefully because a lot of times people say, okay, I'm done with this. Just cash me out. I'm gonna enhance my retirement. Good. I would think everyone would agree, including the children, would say, please make yourself comfortable. But there are a lot of policies like term life don't have any of that. You know, basically it's designed for you to one day pass away. So I don't think any of them good, good or bad, or they both have a good and bad, but basically we need to know what we have. We can't be surprised at the last minute saying, I thought I had a whole life. That, that is a big thought that you don't wanna be making at the last minute. So what we tell the clients is, just like you just asked me right now, ask yourself, what do I have? Is that a lease or is that a purchase? If I purchased it, how can I reuse this along the way? And if I didn't purchase it, how can I make this a permanent? So there are those ideas that we have to think about because a lot of times this insurance is equity. And if you could build enough of it, yeah, I don't think people want to lose it. And term life, even though it's not building equity, it has chance to become a whole life. And that brings up a one subject I want to talk about, which is called a conversion. Term life insurance has a lot of bad rap because people would say, oh, mine expired. I can't renew it because, you know, companies don't like me. But that's not really the case a lot of times. There is a clause in the term life insurance that says that at by a certain age, in this scenario, most likely is age 70. So if you're a 69 year old and has a term life that is still active, there's a good chance you can make that into a whole life before the conversion expires. Um, so term life is not really a bad situation. It's just that you are able to save money for the length of the term. So a lot of seniors would say, okay, now job is done. You know, the junior and the little Timmy is already taken care of. So I'm gonna just maybe cancel the policy or convert it to whole life and eventually start building equity now. And that, that's what we see a lot. So for me, as an insurance professional, I feel like term life and whole life are both a very good situation to be in, no matter what. But as a senior, yes, equity is the key for a lot of my clients. 
I mean, that equity can be used for so many different things. Yes. yes. So just off the type of, top of my head, you, uh, if you have grandchildren, you can also, out of that equity, buy your grandchildren separate life insurances. Absolutely. Help Absolutely. For that expensive education that is correct. Going. Correct. Okay. Um, correct. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say that there's another trend amongst a lot of seniors, which is to take care of the grandchildren. Um, I think it's such a beautiful heart, beautiful things that I see every day where grandpa, grandma said, okay, if I don't use this, why not give it to my grandkids to support them along the way of education and all that? Because if I feel like I give it to my kid, they're going to buy Mercedes with it. So, you know, they kind of want to do something for the grandkids. But ultimately, what I see happening is that seniors are starving, saying, I can't use this money. I'm going to hold on to it for my Timmy. But instead of doing that, if they were able to purchase life insurance or utilize the old insurance that they didn't need, now they could use their own money and leave what's ultimately the best thing for the beneficiary, which is tax-free death benefits. So life insurance might only have one purpose now to protect someone like your spouse. But once you get to be a senior, yeah, it has so much different use. So I agree 100% that we should all have something but if you have something, especially if you already have one, take a look at it to find out exactly what you have. Okay. And you can also leave money to your favorite charity. Oh, yes. 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 Okay. And one of the things I know what you want to talk about this morning is that can you use it for your long-term care? Correct. Correct. Okay, I, let's yes, talk about that. Yeah, I mean, you being a Medicare agent, um, before I get started on this question, you work with Medicare agent and long-term care is a lot of times there's a misconception saying, oh, if I get sick, government will pay for it. I have Medicare. So, you know, with the chronic illness, permanent damage to my body, I'm okay. That's what I get a lot of times. but. You know, let me ask you, Janet, if I, if a senior, if I'm a senior, if I have a long-term care situation, would Medicare pay for it? Medicare does not have a long-term care benefit. They have a, what they call a skilled nursing benefit, which would be the same as convalescent hospital or rehabilitation centers. And from the first one to 20 days, there is no charge for it. This is with original Medicare, all right? Mm -hmm. From 21 to 100 days, it's for, for the year 2020, it's $176 per day. Now, mm -hmm. if they pick up a Medicare Advantage plan, a supplemental plan, and there's so many of them different out, out there that I can't give you what the exact co-pays would be, it would be less money out of their pockets. But once that 100 days is over in that calendar year, okay, unless they have a break in time, they have no coverage or they're no. gonna pay, pay for it out of their own pocket, which can be extremely expensive. A lot of the people I work with find the $176 to be extremely expensive but it will really go up even higher than that so if you, you went to a bankruptcy you think uh they can go into bankruptcy they can pick up medicaid in california oh. it's called medi-cal but then they then medi-cal can come back and attach your assets exactly okay. exactly that yeah. So that's so it's just you know, and I've run into a couple of people that have had that problem, where yes, they thought everything was taken care of, but because they didn't have the care for long term care, and long term care is something like I look at as with automobile insurance, you're buying it hoping that you're never going to use it. Exactly. But <laughs> as but as we get older. I know more and more people who need that long-term care. Right now, I have a friend who 
really belongs in a long-term care facility and for what she can afford to go into, she doesn't want to be in there. Then versus a higher, you know, a place that will charge you more money. And yeah. this is something that I would go into because I'm looking at someone coming on the show to talk about assistance. Okay. Okay. Yes. But I deal with that. Care, it's I have it because you can not, I have it the more expensive way or I just have a straight long-term care policy that I purchased 20 some years ago. Okay. Because at that time I did not know about what life insurance could do. Okay. If I had to do it all over again, I would have bought life insurance instead. And then I would have had a writer for long-term care. Correct. Program. Correct. And that's what you're going for. Yeah. So I'm glad you mentioned the writer. So in our industry, life insurance industry, we call it chronic illness. Um, Long-term care is a really, a, well, I definition. So we use a word called chronic illness, which basically says there's six daily living activities that you have eating, bathing, dressing, toiletry, transferring, and continuing. If you can't do two out of six of those activities, you're permanently disabled. That's the way we, we consider it. Now, so let's just say along the way of your life, you had a term life, you had a whole life, whichever life insurance you had you're able to listen to agents like myself and say, okay, put a writer in for a chronic illness. Nothing has happened. So as senior, you're wondering, okay, now what am I gonna do with my life insurance? If you keep it alive, now you have an access to that money before you die. I'm talking about the whole death benefit. Whatever you were gonna leave for little Timmy, now you have an access as an individual who needs help. Now, a lot of times, if you have less than 100 days, maybe it's the state will take care of it. But when you talk about chronic illness, there's a good chance that this might be permanent damage. If that happens, ultimately, your asset will be in danger. Instead of um, um, using your own asset to pay for this, I, had, I see many seniors who said, I have a life insurance already. Now, I'm old enough where my children are old enough. However, I could, I would love to get to that money because um, my quality of life going forward may go down significantly because I don't have the money to pay for long-term care. And if I did have to pay, have pay the money, now I can make myself very comfortable. So life insurance is a, such a powerful weapon. If you design it right that, like young people would put disability insurance in their life insurance. So they, they can't go to work, they're ill, they could get, still get paid and still maintain their lifestyle for the family. But as a senior, that disability insurance now becomes long-term care insurance. Because even at a certain age, you still have to take care of yourself independently. And that takes a lot of health, that takes a lot of planning and money. So um, it's not just about retiring comfortably with a lot of money in my pocket, but rather, is my home, my equity, is everything else gonna be in danger because I don't have certain insurance or certain way to do it. And having a lot of insurance is very hard. So we recommend if you already have a policy, why not upgrade it so that it could include some of the riders that is available. There is individual, it's relative to the person and the company and the product. But generally speaking, if you're talking to agents like Janice or myself, we like to get more for the clients. There's only just one way. That's, that's not the way you, reason why people deal with us. They wanna get more saving out of it, more catch-ups out of the bottle. And not, sometimes it's just not the premium. It's about what you get out of the product. So, well, that, yes. That leads me into a question. You're talking about premium. So if I'm already paying, let's say $150 a month for my life insurance, okay? Mm -hmm. And I want, to, I want to include that extra rider. Is that going to increase the premium or am I oh. using the benefits of the, the equity in my policy to pay for that? Yeah, so chances are there's a, depending on the underwriting. So here, this is where you have to almost think of it as a refinance of your home. If you are, 
you had a mortgage, if you ever think about upgrading, the best thing you could do is refinance to a lower interest rate. Same thing would happen to life insurance. What we're trying to do is to upgrade. So if your health is there, the interest rate is there, yes, if all the moon and the sun align, you don't have to pay more to get the rider on there. It's almost like upgrading your policy at the right time to include that. But let's just say your health has declined, you're now much significantly older than when you first got it. Yes, those will force the policy to increase. But even at the increase though, it might be more affordable to then getting another insurance. So it might not hurt to look. I, I know I was always said insurance, you should do it before you need it. Because it's harder to it's harder to get it when you need it. And that's yeah. just like that with any form of insurance. Any you wait till you yeah. need it, it's too late. Absolutely. Um so, a lot of times in our in, in our world, people are getting in trouble because they're misinformed. Like I see a lot of clients who says, Oh, I have a living trust. No one could take my home away from me. <laughs> no, living trust, well, it did put a nice fence around your house, but it doesn't prevent anybody from not touching it. Like they would say, okay, if I get sick, you know, well, California is going to pay for everything. And eventually, yeah, my house and all that will eventually be passed to my kids and they don't have to pay for it. But I would think that a lot of times what's happening now is that affluent clients who own a possession or equity are now forced to pay it back at the end when they pass away. So all this equity that they were holding on to, starving to give to the next generation are now in jeopardy because state of California is trying to intercept it. Yeah, yeah. I mean. And, we, and there that, could right? be in other states too, because I know sometimes we have people that from other states watching our show. Okay. Oh, yes, yes. yes. So I mean the the rules for probate is different in, in every in every state, but yes. I do know that um, trust people can bill bill your trust for anything that's outstanding. Yeah, uh, I mean you could it's, it's, see a lot of times <clears throat> the estates that people are leaving behind are needs to be transferred right away to the beneficiary. There's no time for waiting. Oh, I don't need the money. None of that. We need to bury people. We need to have the services. We need the money to come out. But a lot of times, um, if there's a creditor, it complicates so many things. There's a lien. There's a process, legal process. So eventually, it takes years just to get to the money. Okay. So, Well, that's we a good that. question, because that's the trust. And I know that's not your expertise. Okay, a will and a trust. But if you have an insurance policy, and usually those are outside of the will and the trust. Correct, okay? correct. So if you have that, your beneficiaries are inheriting money, they can't, creditors can't go towards them to collect off of no. your debt. Yeah, life insurance benefit is untouchable. It will go straight to the beneficiary, any line, any creditor. Now, after they get the money, it's a different story. Anybody could be sued, perhaps, for any reason. But to give an asset such as your home versus giving life insurance is two different processes. And upsetting those possession is two different processes too, including taxes and the fees and all that. Just real quick. <clears throat> on the long-term care, especially under the conditions that we're living under now with the COVID-19, <clears throat> and we see the assisted living places having so many deaths coming out of them with, this, with the seniors. Yes. In, uh, being that you're using it as critical care, okay, can it be used for somebody to come into your home and help you? Yeah, so I'm glad you asked me. A life insurance is unlike a long-term care insurance where we do not pay the doctors or the hospital. We pay the patient directly. Now there is a per diem rule. Each state has it. I think there's a state mandated, but it's like 300 or some dollars right now. It comes out to be about 10 grand a month. So let's just say you were in a long-term care or chronic illness situation. Life insurance company 
will deplete your death benefit and start sending you a check directly to you. Once you receive the money, like in your case, Janice, you could say, I have long-term care insurance. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to use this to enhance my life, get two nurses. So be it. If you don't need it, you don't have to take it either. You could say, you know what, just give it to my beneficiary when I ultimately pass away. But let's just say your death benefit was half a million dollars. Can you imagine the comfort level that you could bring to uh, your parents at the last minute? Let's just say it's not even quarter million, it's 100,000, let's just say. You know, for a beneficiary like a grown up kid, 100,000 might not go a long way. But for their parents who are suffering from long term care or chronic illness, 100,000 is amazing support for those people. So I think it's not only for the insured, but the beneficiary should have some type of choice to say, help my mom now while she's alive, rather than waiting till she's gone. You know? Well, John, we have been talking for a long time this oh, morning. Thank you. And I feel like we haven't even touched all the subjects that we wanted to cover this morning. But one of the things I wanted to talk about long-term care I want to lead it into one other subject, and I think I'm going to have you come back and talk about the long, more about the long-term care. But also, can you use that and I use it for your final expense? I know people don't want to talk about final yes. expense, but we know so much about people dying lately. Okay, uh, right. young people are dying. Older people are definitely dying from this COVID-19. So what about my final expense, okay? Being, having a, being buried or cremated or interned is expensive. So I would like you to come back and talk about that subject and how you can use that money that is in that equity that's in the life insurance for that. So if you would like to come back on another time, we would like to, we would, we'll definitely talk about that. But right now, I want to um, show how to get a hold of John and, and myself. Here we go. Here's our information. Here's John and, um, and our information on here and how to contact us. Um, I know John will do a review of your, ben of your benefits with you at no charge. He really is interested in making sure that you get the type of insurance that's best for you and you're getting the most out of that insurance. So here is John's information and of course my information if you're interested in anything. Um, and you see here is my... Uh, my website for um, Medicare insurance. So thank you, John. Thank you. So Appreciate happy it. to have you here this morning. I really yeah, appreciate it's always it. enjoyable. And I think we had a lot great conversation this morning. And I know we could go on for another hour without a problem. So yeah, it was a, it was a very day. fun time. It flew by quick. Yes, it was great. By real quick. And have a great day. I will talk you with you really soon. And um, uh, looking forward to having you back on where we can continue our conversation. Thank you, everyone right. who's Thanks. looked at this. Have a great time. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you.